Uh, I am Yamada Yohei from Japan. Uh, uh, this is my first visit uh, to the US. Uh, I think I feel very good. Bloomington is a very beautiful city and Indiana University is very comfortable to me. And I am very happy to be here and appreciate it to make a presentation here. Thank you. Uh, and my, uh, does everyone have my handout? Okay. Okay. Uh, my handout shows uh, some details of examples or some references, abbreviations, or some notes. But my presentation is mainly showing this uh, slides. Uh, please look ahead, please. Okay. My title of the presentation, my talk is Above R in Dago. Uh, R is translated in English to be and very similar, uh, similar to uh, be love in English. Uh, they have three uses, existential and popular and auxiliary use. And uh, uh, example one, shi de shore hana uh, This is existential use. Where were you last night? Ah, in asunshu uh, means uh, existential meaning. The next uh, example two, I was little. Uh, this is copular use. Ah, in the asunbe means copular love, copular meaning. And the next, yoki uh, jasunshu. This is auxiliary use. What, uh, what, uh, what were you doing? Kiji uh, asunshu to do, uh, to be, and past. So uh, this is just like uh, do. Be you, uh, what were you doing? This meaning, and the purpose of my presentation is uh, showing some usage of the verb a, uh, and this verb is differs from other general verb. Uh, and at first, I would like to talk about this. Uh, some usage of the verb a uh, differs from others. This is all I would like to say, but um, this is uh, s not so s not so new. Um, uh, very, this is not so unusual. Uh, typologically, very often seen uh, uh, because uh, existential verb uh, often functions as copular or auxiliary verb in many languages and copular verb, existential verb, auxiliary verb is uh, often differs from general verb in many languages. So this, this um, point is very boring or not so uh, exciting. Uh, so I added two points. The one is auxiliary verb R is not um, rather similar to suffix or uh, not no longer a verb. The other is uh, historical or comparative view. Uh, this verb R in Dagur is um, cognate with the Middle Mongolian A, uh, and it is okay to say Dagur is very uh, similar to Middle Mongolian, as it's often said. Mm. So I'd like to talk about my presentation into three sections. Uh, this, these three sections, okay? Before starting my discussion, I try to I introduce the Dagur languages. Dagur is Mongolic languages. Oh, Dagur is Mongolic language. Uh, and uh, population of speakers are less than 100,000 100, and spoken in mainly in oh. mm. northeast area of China 
And my field work is taken in this uh, northeast of China, and mainly in Haila in Inner Mongolia. Uh, and some old Mongolic, Mongolic features are preserved. Uh, some scholars say uh, Dagro is uh, living Middle Mongolian. Uh, okay. The next, I introduce the uh, verb R in Dagu. First, existence, existence of R. I sh I'll show uh, some examples. Hotond Asun, he was in the town. The, uh, next, Nek Budun Choro Ajawe, there is a big storm. Uh, these two examples uh, shows Asun is past tense and Ajawe is Mm, progressive meaning. Uh, so, uh, existential R uh, can follow the past tense or progressive meaning, but they don't, they can't uh, be accepted to use non past and non, non progressive simple form. If uh, they want to say non past, non progressive simple form, uh, he said this, they said this. Bawashin uh, Hanabei, where is your father? Uh, the word bay is used, uh, exist. Uh, this is a kind of, of a kind of uh, predicative, predicative existence, existential. Uh, this is not verb uh, because it is, uh, it has no, it has no inflection of verb. Negative is also. Uh, uh, represented as this. Namt uh, har satan way. I don't have brown sugar. Uh, this way is negative existence. Existen existence negative uh, is used. This is not above either. The next, copula use. Udes tenger yamada uh, asan. What, uh, what was the weather yesterday? Yamar asan. Uh, this is past tense. The next, Elimbas uh, Elt Ajawe. It's early now. Uh, uh, it is a progressive use, uh, Jawe. And uh, copular use, copular R is very, very similar to existential use. So they don't have non past, non progressive, simple form. Uh, if they want to say non past, non progressive meaning, uh, represented as this. Tilku Echigumin, that man is my father. Uh, this is nominal pro predicate or zero copula. Uh, that person, father, uh, me, uh, my father, uh, there is no copula word. And the negative is uh, represented as this. She mini mumum bin bishim shi. She mini mumum bishim shi. You are not my mother. Uh, bishin, negative word, bishin is used. Uh, so far, I show you the uh, copula use and the existential use are, uh, they are very similar. They don't have negative form and they don't have simple form. Third, auxiliary R is uh, not the same. B10 de ichigut min, tell wanta jawe. When I were there, uh, I went there. Uh, he was sleeping. Uh, one touch away. One touch away. Sleeping. Uh, B. Sleeping is. Uh, he was sleeping. Ah. Uh, I wrote this uh, past tense, but uh, this is non past. Oh, sorry. This is my mistake. Uh, one touch away. Uh, auxiliary R can be followed by non past tense. This is not similar as copula or existential use. And negative is represented as this. Uh, she doesn't know when to marry. Uh, doesn't know. Uh, negative was ur is uh, uh, located before the main verb. Uh, this is negative form, but uh, this is a negative form of main verb met uh, to know. Uh, this is not uh, auxiliary R uh, negative form. 
uh, it can not can be accepted medic ur away is not accepted so uh, i think it uh, auxiliary r is um, has no negative form either next i show the uh, tense paradigm by uh, presented by enhubato 1988 enhubato 1988 is the biggest big described study on Dagur, uh, they consider the tensive system in Dagur as this table three, uh, non past bay, uh, past sun of bay. Uh, my investigation is way in higher dialect. Uh, his, uh, his description is about mm, other dialects, so bay. It, these are very uh, same thing. Non past bay, past sun. sun. And non progress on progress, uh, bay, ja, bay, sun, ja, sun. Uh, it is not correct uh, that or misreading progressive uh, enfubato regard progressive consisted, consisted in tense paradigm is very, uh, un I think, I incorrect. But uh, the ja is important. Uh, apparently, this form is converge and plus uh, auxiliary a uh, two morphemes. Uh, so uh, this is a problem. Uh, with whether there is a one word or two word is very uh, problematic. So uh, I discussed the next section about this. Uh, this example is uh, already shown. B uh, ten could mean tell one touch away. I describe this J uh, R uh, separated tree. And who about to uh, uh, describe this one one um, morphemes? Uh, so this is problem. Auxiliary verb or suffix. This uh, subtitle is also. Uh, confusing. Uh, and Fubato uh, regard it as suffix like things, uh, but they don't say, uh, don't argue or whether it is uh, one word or two words. And I want to discuss uh, this is two word or one word. And I, I don't want, uh, I don't think it as suffix. Uh, this, uh, this is apparently J plus R to morphemes. So uh, I discussed here is not verb or suffix. One word or two word. Uh, auxiliary verb. Uh, so far, I s uh, explain the use of three. Three use of the uh, verb R. Uh, is such this uh, negation is unaccepted uh, for existential existential use, copier use, auxiliary use, uh, but but uh, simple form, non past and non progressive is uh, not accepted in to existential use and copier use, but auxiliary use is uh, accepted of simple form. So uh, I'd like to say existential copy and copyright use of R is uh, verb. Uh, they are verb, so they have verbal form, past form. Sorry. <coughs> oh. uh, since we can use existential and copular use is uh, verb, uh, copular verb as verbal predicate, they have half verbal predicate properties. However, existential and copular is uh, just a nominal predicate. So uh, nominal predicate properties they have. But auxiliary use is not a uh, nominal use. So. Uh, uh, they kept up <laughs> verbal property or uh, 
acquires uh, vowel property. So auxiliary use is uh, rather similar to other verbs, or it is okay to say uh, auxiliary is depends on the main verb. So their use is rather similar to other verbs, other general verbs. And the next, uh, uh, this table shows uh, auxiliary use is rather depends on the main verb. And the next, uh, auxiliary use is not accepted accepted to use negative form. Uh, other auxiliary uh, verbs are okay uh, accepted to negation. Umsuch shadwe can wear. Negated from umsuch ul shadun cannot wear. Uh, the two between the main verb and auxiliary verb okay to insert negative word ul. Judge ul shadun shu is also uh, accepted. Uh, main verb and auxiliary verb is inserted negative word. But umsuch uh, awe is not uh, cannot be accepted. Inserted negative word. Umsuch ul is not accepted. Ul umsuch awe is negative form. So uh, it is an uh, explanation of uh, main verb and a connection. They connect very strongly. Okay, go next section. Uh, cognate verb with R in other Mongolics. Uh, this is a middle Mongolian. Keju Sao Amo. In middle Mongolian, R is attested. This is apparently uh, cognate with double R. And it means sitting with same something. Uh, this is a auxiliary use. So I want to see in other Mongolics using a cognate with a. I'll show the map again. Uh, in Central and Northern group, uh, Mongolian, Buryat, or Oilat, Mongols, uh, they may many of Mongolic languages lacks a. Uh, they replaced by, with by other verbs. And uh, cognate A uh, is uh, attested in this South Mongolian group, Mongol and Bonan. They keep A, uh, but it is no longer a verb, just like suffix or critic or part particle like thing. So it is okay to say it is accepted. It's okay to say uh, verbal A uh, is uh, almost only in double. Modern, in modern Mongolics. This is Middle Mongolian, but Middle Mongolian R is verbal, has verbal property, but they also um, some difference between uh, modern Dagur and Middle Mongolian uh, because this example, Aharaju Uru Ahunta, you have not grown up. This is negative from uru ahon. Uh, this a uh, has negative form, so it is different from different from mm, dagur. Let's sum it up in table three. Uh, Mongolic has some okay uh, cognate with a. Uh. Mongolian or Buryat, Central Mongolian Mongolic. Uh, has similar verb by. Uh, their uses uh, are very similar, but uh, they are replaced with by other verbs. Mongol has a, but uh, they are no longer a verb. Uh, uses are very similar, but no longer a verb. Very uh, suffix like things. And Middle Mongolian is very similar. Verbal a is. Uh, Dagur is uh, preserved, preserved, but they are little uh, difference between Dagur and Middle Mongolian. 
So I want to show the uh, cognate verb with a uh, in the Mongolic. Uh, Middle Mongol is very similar to Dagu. They lost negative forms. Uh, Dagu is, uh, Dagu, A is, cons um, Dagu, A is uh, very similar to Middle Mongolian A, but uh, uh, they lost negative form. Uh, their grammaticalization is uh, more, di more grammaticalized, uh, lost independency, uh, Mongol and Bona. And more grammaticalized, lost A, uh, other Mongolic languages, replaced with by. Mm. That's all. My conclusion is uh, just this. Mm. Thank you all. Uh, Well, this is fascinating. Thank, thank you so much for coming and presenting this. I, I have a question that um, is, it may be more terminological than anything else, but uh, the different sub um, semantically definable oh. subclasses you had, um, you used the term existential, yeah. but then the example you gave was really locative. And, yeah. and I was wondering if, um, so if uh, on, on the handout, it's number seven. Um, I think it was number 10 on the PowerPoint. But it was like, I, I don't have uh, brown sugar. And then the negative, right? Is, so the negative then, yes. uh, you don't have ah, but rather uh, uwe. And I was wondering if you had a, a negation of a sentence, like he, he wasn't in the town, um, if you would also have uwe, or if there would be yet another um, negative verb-like item, uh -huh. which may really be a particle uh, that that would serve that function. Uh, 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 thank you for your uh, question. Uh, uh, he wasn't in town. Uh, is okay. Uh, it is acceptable uh, using way, uh, just uh, uh, in hotondo way. Mm, just just now, he wasn't. Uh, he isn't. Mm, in the town now, or uh, it is okay uh, to use the past tense uh, in hotondo way, asan. Is also used. Uh, uh, did I answer your question? Just way is used uh, for uh, ex locative, existential use. Well, just to note that in, in, in at least some languages of the world, Spanish being one of them, there's a, so there are verbs that could be translated be oh. in English, but there's a, a, there's a verb, a, a, a estar, which is used for expressing lo, location, location, but it's definitely not used for expressing I existence. Oh. There's another particle that's used oh. for that, and yet another particle that's used oh. for a real copula. So it's just, I think that uh, just, uh, you know, spelling all of those things out might, might be helpful. And then which of those then, when negated, will give you a form of ah uh, and which ones won't? Ah. Uh, I think, uh, think. I mean, in, in, in a sense, well, let me put it this way. In a sense, you've, you've told us about ah, uh, but I'm also asking about, well, when you can't have ah, uh, then, what, then what, what, what do you get? Right, so like with negation, for example, and showing us what each of those subcases is like would give us a sense of how the grammar groups these things semantically. Uh, uh, how, they, how the semantics is mapped onto uh, surface forms. Mm. Oh, you. I didn't catch your mean well. Uh, mean well uh, I think R and the Bay 
the difference between a uh, verbal a and non-verbal way is uh, uh, not as lo locative and existential mm, or other differences. Uh, so uh, way and uh, and way is must into um, mm, no no no. no. Mm, I I can't uh, explain it. Uh, your comment means uh, that. Uh, way is not a, a verbal a uh, so mm, I, I'm sorry sorry I didn't catch you from mm, uh, maybe we could talk about it after afterwards but uh, it, it could be that where you were what you're labeling existential would better be labeled existential slash locative, oh. or it might be that those really are two different categories in Dagger. I th I think uh, there are no difference between uh, locative and existential. I think, mm. and uh, I need further uh, research about it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing because all your examples locate an entity in space rather than telling us that an entity exists in an, pre, in an already known state, like space. So mm -hmm. they all seem to be locative. Um, just typologically, often when you have the same verb, you have a lot of word order changes between the location and the entity located. Oh, oh. Um, it happens, but I was also wondering about um, the ja. Yeah. Um, suffix, um, which you said, you try like, you um, gloss it as a simultaneous marker. Yeah. Yes. But you said in during your talk that it's a converb, um, which makes more sense. And I wanted to say, since you are arguing against the analysis of ja, bay mm. being a single affix, um, it makes sense in a in a way because if you look at your Middle Mongolian examples, yes. you have ju. Oh yeah. So. There is no retention of ah there, so I think um, you could give further evidence in the sense that there is no ja origin. Uh, uh, in the origin is ju. Yeah, uh, I mean, origin is ju plus ah. Yeah, uh, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So there is no ah in the um, original affix. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, original affix. There are no ah. Uh. Yeah, so yeah. you have a really clear, I think, pathway. Oh, um, yes. It would be very convincing if you can show an example um, of a previous stage where you only have the Jew form followed by the A. Ah. Like, yeah. like they have for the English progressive, for example. Yes, yes. Um, we can discuss it later, but thank you. This was really uh, thank you very much. clear and fascinating. Mm -hmm. One more question here. I just have a clarification question. I, um, could you please explain the interaction between negation and the null copula? So your examples 8 through 11, um, I mean, just to be specific, um, in 9 you have external negation with ul, right? But in 11 you you have um, this bishen um, there. So what would be the difference? I mean, in nine, I, as far as I understand, this is you weren't late, and in eleven, that's you're not my mother. In in one, in nine, it's external, but in eleven, it's also external, but it's a different form. So external would be the wrong term. I'm sorry, but um, so in one case you're using bishen, yes. right? Yes. And in the other, you're not. Well, is this in? Uh, is this the difference between nominal and adjectival, or? Uh, you mean uh, nine? She would do that. Exactly. Ah, yeah. uh, 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 so, sorry. Uh, uh, <coughs> this is my uh, uh, explanation is very uh, not sufficient. Uh, general verb neg negation is uh, exp expressed as ul, uh, yeah, part this particle uh, posted before just before the verb. Mm -hmm. 
uh, Uru dot 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 sun dot tan. But uh, uh, nominal predicate is uh, negated as uh, Bishin is post uh, okay. post after the uh, noun. Mm -hmm. So to be late is actually a verb then. So I ha okay, I understand oh, yeah. now. All oh. right, so that that was just that. that oh, the second three. All right, thank you so much. Thank you very much.